Oh god, they're coming right for us! Oh no! That's a very slow approach. <laughs> that noise certainly makes it ominous though, especially with the clashing thunder and the dark clouds. Well, I mean, considering the size of these ships, I think that's a decent enough speed. Point taken. Uh, random ship battle, guys, here on Skies of Arcadia. I'm the comic Valley Coil. with- Valley- Air pirate vessel spotted straight ahead, commencing attack. I'm the Green Scorpion. So, yeah, random ship battle. Let's do this. It, it is important to do random ship battles if you're going for everything. Um, I might actually be able to just completely obliterate them. Well, we don't, we'll yeah, see. we don't know how strong these guys are, right? Yeah, I'm not really sure. My glasses are so dirty, I can't decide if I want my glasses on or not. <laughs> I, I need new ones. I've gone to a point where, like, I can't. Oh! Uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've gotten pretty strong. Oh, that's oh, zero damage! No! <laughs> they can't do anything to us! Oh, poor ship! You know, maybe we could just take the value in Armada head on. <laughs> maybe! <laughs> I, I mean, no, we can't. This is just, like, a random patrol ship. Any of the, uh... Any of the other Admiral ships can still at least, like... Dent us. Yeah. If we were to, say, like, have to fight all six of them in a row, that would probably... Blueheim certainly gave us a run for our money, too. Yeah. Like, not entirely, but he brought us down to a point where we had to heal up. The, the toughest one for us, I think, was, um, Ruckman. Uh, Ruckman, yeah. Yeah, the first one. Just, just bombard him. That's overkill! I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, poor mages. <laughs> and here we're like... Here we're like talking to Piastal, like, oh, we we didn't attack your ship. We would never do that. And we're gonna hey, blow the crap out of this guy. Hey, in all fairness, they attacked us. <laughs> they okay, started. we were just we were just standing idle or floating idle in the sky, and they decided, oh my god, air pirate ship, approach, attack. What did, did they expect us to we, do? We are a fully armed, like. This is a Valuan ship for all intents and purposes. That, that is known to have been stolen from Valua, and they're in, we're in their airspace. So anyway. Though, if we were not in their airspace, they still would have attacked us. Um, I think we're at the Maw of Tartarus here, but that's actually not why... No, we are not. Like, the Maw of Tartarus is a little uh, further away, but we yeah. want to go to the, we actually want to go to the Valuan capital. Yeah. Um... For something, I don't, like, I think I know what you want to do, but I'm not sure. I, I'm really just checking for missable treasure chests now. Because well, the point where we're not going to be able to come back to Valua is approaching. Ah, okay. So we want to go ahead and, like, nip that in the bud. Yeah, because I'm, I'm afraid I would forget otherwise. Um, is it around here somewhere? Wow, I cannot freaking see. Uh, this is the only way you can get into the value in capital, though, is once you have, one, once you have the altitude changing. I think it's actually inside those walls. Like, go to the north. Yeah, go to the north and above that rock formation. Like through here. And then sink down. There it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. Oh, there's the Colosseum where we fought. Oh, it's interesting to actually see this place in game because you don't get many chances to. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just where does it let me land? There we go. Lower city. There we go. All right. Yeah, remember back when we were here talking about class disparity? That's still a thing. All right, so um, this is going to be a fairly boring me checking things on a guide, making sure that I've found them already. Well then, I might as well go ahead and open up with a certain conversation. I've been playing a game lately that... Yeah, we talked a lot about um, Smash Ultimate that we're all excited for, but another game in Nintendo's window... That just got released. Yeah. Um, it got released at the time we're recording this. By the time you release it, it'll been a, like been at least two weeks, right? Uh, yeah. Um, Pokemon Let's Go! Not gonna lie, I was actually not- I was actually considering not getting it. 
Um, because, I'm, I'm waiting for Christmas. Like just it, it, it looked, it looked like something that was adhering a little too much to Pokemon Go. And don't get me wrong, I like Pokemon Go. And I'm just not the, I'm not too keen on it myself. Like frankly, at least not anymore. But <clears throat> um, after talking with Patty for a little bit, he was like, uh, it looks good. Like the reviews on it are very good. So we decided, okay. Um, I, I was getting skeptical that it was maybe just not the game for me. But then I started playing it, and I was like, oh my god, this is adorable. This is cute. We got that one. Okay, good. Um, this is adorable. This is cute. Oh my god, Eevee is amazing. Like, she Did you is... get Let's Go Eevee? I, I got Let's Go Eevee, specifically. Um, she is such a treasure. Like, such a little ball of cuteness. And yeah, like, the game... Like, there's no random encounters. There's no random encounters anymore. Like, you don't randomly encounter Pokemon Yeah, they, Pokemon uh, they walk around the map kind mm -hmm. of like in... Which I actually kind of like! Um, and also, there are no, like, wild Pokemon battles. Like, you, it's treated a lot like, uh, Go, wherein you, uh, kind of... Well, wherein you kind of basically just go around, uh, like, catching Pokemon with the Pokeballs, right? Yeah. But it's not as... At least there's still, like, Pokemon v. Pokemon battles, right? Exactly. But like, those and are that, just and, trainer battles. And that's exactly it. It's not as, like intrusive or like completely different that it's jarring like yeah catching pokemon is still a thing but um i just catch them at my own pace now like i can just basically choose who i want to, to encounter and go with it and you do gain experience from catching pokemon so it is encouraged to just go ahead and uh uh to go ahead and like catch as many as you want also because you also get the candies so it's kind of similar to go in that sense and the and when you get to a certain point of like repeated catches, I believe it's thirty. Like if yeah. you catch thirty of the same Pokemon, the shiny encounter increases. Oh, okay. Like you get him, you get a bigger chance for getting that particular shiny. It's called chain catching, or like uh, something like that. I don't know. Okay. But um, but yeah, the Pokemon battles are still there. It's still like you know, there are still trainers that block your path. There are still gym leaders, and they're not as easy as I thought they were going to be. Hmm. I actually got caught off guard by Misty because, okay, here I go. Like, uh, she's got water type Pokemon. I'm going to go ahead and use my Bellsprout to take him down. Next thing you know, she pulls out Psyduck and I'm like, oh, nuts. Oh, she has a Psyduck. Bellsprout's weak to psychic types. I got to switch. And well, I, Psyduck's not psychic type, but does it... It has psychic It knows moves. psychic? Okay. It, know, it, it doesn't know I psychic. I mean, not psychic, but like confusion it, or something. Yeah, it knows confusion. And I was like, oh, nuts. I got to switch out. Yeah, no, she actually ta she actually caught me off guard. Neat. Like, Brock didn't, but at the same time, like, you know, it's Brock. But, yeah, like, Misty caught me off guard. Lieutenant Surge was actually kind of difficult. I was planning on playing it, so, I mean, I'm happy to hear that I might actually enjoy it more than I thought. And, like, I'm definitely enjoying it, and it's... Honestly, the way the game treats, like... You know the walking mechanic that was in Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver? Um, it's back. But uh, you can you can have Eevee travel around with you, but now you can have another Pokemon travel with you along with Eevee. Oh, cool! Or or Pikachu based on your, based on the game. So like you can have like Eevee or Pikachu on your hat, and the and another Pokemon of your choosing walking around with you. And each one has a different like walking thing. Like if yeah. you have a flying Pokemon, it actually flies around you. If you have like a certain Pokemon that you can have certain Pokemon that follow behind you. Or one of my personal favorites, um, Bell Sprout. Um, my Bellsprout was actually leading the way. Like, it was actually, like, I was following it. Huh. Like, it was running in the direction that I was going, but it always wanted to stay, like, ahead. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, wow, I didn't even see this. Uh, into here? Somewhere? Looks like a door. <clears throat> um. Yeah, I don't remember this. Nice uh, find! And, and a Moonberry! Okay, so this was officially worth it, because I found something that I wouldn't have found that we would have missed. Yes. And we're... we are going to... We're gonna be kind of cutting it close on whether or not we have enough to do, like, the final ultimate boss battle. Really? But I think, because I am doing this... Uh-huh. We're, we're gonna make it. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, let's make doubly sure we can do that. Otherwise, we have one hell of a grind later. Yeah, so this is another, like... This might be another mostly podcast episode. That, that's fine. Um, but, uh, and for me personally, I've actually decided to kind of, like, name my Pokemon after flowers. 
neat. And that's a cool thing. Um, you don't have to go to a PC or the name changer to uh, change up your Pokemon party or change the nicknames. You can just do it freely from your menu. Okay. So there's no like, oh shoot, I need this Pokemon, so I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, you know, switch up the box, or um, I don't want this Pokemon, I'll just go ahead and like, uh, you know, switch it over. Um, you don't have to go to a Pokemon Center or a PC to do it. You can just um, do it from the menu screen, like that, easy. Okay. Which is nice, which is very nice. I'm not like anti what Pokemon's been doing either. I was just kind of worried that, you know, it seemed to me like they were making this more as a entry point into the oh, series. Oh, it is. For it totally people. is. It's a transition. It's a tr it's a transition game. And like, I think that's a great thing. I just thought maybe there wouldn't be very much for me a veteran player. Yes, like it is. Like it is definitely a transition game. Like it's the ga kind of game that is like, hey, to those of you who are big Pokemon Go fans, why not try this? So you we can ease you into the franchise. And I think that's a great idea. But even as a veteran Pokemon player myself, I am finding things I'm enjoying. Cool. So I can safely say that it is well worth uh, it is well worth your time, even if you're whether you're a newcomer or a veteran. At least as of right now, especially because um, from what I am to understand, if you go to like if if you actually dedicate yourself to you know playing through the game, yeah, the post game challenges are actually something else. Like they will test you. Cool. From what I am to understand, like they're ma they're called the master trainers. Oh, I heard about this. It's like you have to have the same Pokemon. It's like a, well, tell me about it. I'm not entirely sure. I don't know too much about I it. Think All I know it's is like, that like if they have an electrode, you have to challenge them with an electrode, and it's like a one v one, or something. I think I think maybe. And there's like a master trainer for all of the Pokemon. So Pretty much, like, yeah. But uh, yeah, and that was my understanding of it. And really from what I am to hear, the Elite Four actually are nothing to sneeze at. They actually will test you if you're not prepared for it. Good. Because, not not to be a gatekeeper, but I was getting a little tired of, like... I mean, part of it is just that I've gotten older and better, better at the games, but the newer mm -hmm. Pokemon games were feeling very, very easy to mm -hmm. me. I mean, this game's easy. Like, not like... It, it's definitely not... The, it's definitely not Platinum. It's definitely not, like, Heart Gold or Soul Silver or anything. Yeah. I would say, compare it to Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire's Elite Four. Not the hardest Elite Four, but they will kick your butt if you don't know what you're doing. Okay, um, Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire was kind of just a giant breeze for me, but... <laughs> well, there you go. But would you say that about the Elite Four? I would say, actually, even the Elite Four in Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire didn't give me very much trouble. Um, Except for Drake. Even, Drake, even Drake because Drake actually gave me a bit of trouble. The I others didn't so much, so but I did that. I think I've told this story before, but I was like, oh man, when they, I, so I replayed Ruby as a Nuzlocke because Ruby and Sapphire are my like nostalgic favorite Pokemon games mm -hmm. for reasons of purely nostalgia. Right. And just a few days after I finished my Nuzlocke. Nintendo announced they were remaking Ruby and Sapphire, and I was like, oh man, because now those games are, like, fresh in my mind, so, like, replaying them again wasn't really, like, revisiting those games for me anymore, because I had just revisited them. Point taken. And, and like, that that's not the game's fault, that's just, like, bad timing on my part. <laughs> um, so, I played... Um, You're going back the way you came. Yeah, I'm actually leaving now. This is everything I needed to find here. Ah, okay. Um, so I played through Alpha Sapphire as I decided to do a blue lock. Hey, so I decided to uh, skip ahead since we were done in the dungeon just to get us out of the dungeon. <laughs> but what a blue lock is, is that basically I limited myself to only using water type Pokemon. Really? Which is easy in Ruby and Sapphire because... Point. 7.8 yes. too much water. Yeah, um, you're right. You're right. And I can't remember the names that I did now, but I named each of them after a, like, after a lake or an ocean or something like that. Oh, that's cool. Um, I can't remember what any of the names were anymore, but, like, I would have one named, like, uh, Loch Ness and one named Erie and one named, uh, Mississippi and stuff like that. Gotcha. Um... Um, the names I currently have in my po like, I only have three Pokemon in my, uh, party for Let's Go Eevee right now. Yeah. Um, I named my Eevee Daisy. Um, 
I named uh, Bellsprout uh, Venus, you know. Okay. Like, I know it's, like, I know it's actually based off the pitcher plant, but Venus. I, I decided, you know, Venus Flytrap. Yeah. It's the closest thing I'm going to get. And I named uh, Vulpix Heath after the, uh, after the Dryland Heath flower. Oh, clever. Wait, where's the, where's the lift to go back up? I have no idea. So I don't really know how to navigate this place this well. This place is a little bit e. Um. Um. Oh no, it's in that tunnel, isn't it? Oh yeah, you're probably right. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where else I'm gonna. Uh, I don't know what other Pokemon I'm gonna go. I definitely want to use Ghastly, and I'm approaching Lavender Town, and then I'm going to be able to get a Ghastly soon. Cause you know I always gotta. No matter what Pokemon game I'm playing, I always have a Ghost type okay. somewhere in my roster. Um, so yeah, like, and given that Gen 1 really only gave me one choice. You do, like, Lotus or Cherry Blossom or something, because mm -hmm. Cherry Blossom symbolized death. Yep. I was thinking maybe Rose, too, because Rose also is, yeah. uh, like, is a, is a flower that honors the dead. And based on where you're from, there are certain countries that if you give someone a bouquet of roses, it basically, you're basically telling them that you want them to die. <laughs> That that was that was a jarring lesson to learn. <laughs> a little bit passive aggressive. Uh huh. But um, I don't know. I like I like Lotus. I I, I like uh I like the uh, Lotus idea actually. I might just go with that. I'm trying to think of other flower names. Um. Um. I definitely I picked up the Dome Fossil. Okay. And I think I do want to go ahead and use Cabo Tops. Cause okay. like I I like Cabo Toe and Cabo Tops. Sorry, Lord Helix, but I must commit blasphemy here. Capitops is so cool, though. It is. Um, I think I'm actually gonna go to the Moloch Tartarus now, since we have them. I have no inkling of how long this episode actually cuts to right now. That's true. Do we have any other side quests we can do, or? Um, yes, actually, we have one other thing we can do. That's right. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. So, that no, it's not It's not fight another dinky ship. Mm -hmm. I'll do that off screen because it's boring. Yeah, I mean, we completely decimated that mage ship. We just ended it. But, um, yes, uh, what was I going to say? Um, I don't know what my third, uh, po what my last Pokemon is going to be. Like, I considered Cubone and Marowak because I recently caught a Marowak, or I recently caught a Cubone, but I figured I need something a little more special, uh, typey, so I don't know what I'm going to get yet. Okay. Um, hmm. Maybe, I don't know, there's like, there's Alakazam, there's... Uh, I use Alakazam every time I play Gen 1, so I, I kind of want to mix it up. Do you have a water type yet? Um, well, I'm going to get Cobble Tops. Oh yeah, Pyrodile. I was like, what is that? Oh yeah, it's my home. <laughs> Looking for other neat stuff. Then again, Vulpix... Well... Is Vulpix and Ninetales a special or a physical attacker? Um, I think they're more special. I figured. I don't the know Vul off the top of my head. Maybe when it comes, maybe when it evolves into Ninetales, it becomes a little more. Cloister used to be really high tier. That's true. Cloister's cool. Um. Okay, where are you going, actually? I am looking for a certain pirate that has been terrorizing this area. Oh. Oh, yeah! I forgot we had a bounty around here. I thought you were going to look for Doc! Oh, no, we do need to talk to Doc at some point, though, don't we? I mean, we can do that next... I can do that next episode uh, before we head over to the top to the Maw of Tartarus. Sure. Yeah, let's go see if we can find this air pirate. Okay. Um... Do you want to check the, uh... I just know that he's around here somewhere, but I don't know where around Glacia he shows up. Do you want to check the, um... Do you want to check his bio? Maybe that'll give us a hint. Yeah, let me see if... Oh, wait, no, the wanted list. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Daiko Daikokuya the Wealthy. Yavatoman, he has near been seen traveling near the lands of ice. It is said that he throws money at his opponents, confusing them in a fight. Why would someone wealthy need ha feel the need to be an air pirate? Um, probably because they have everything they could ever want, and now nothing's exciting to them anymore. I think that's why a lot of celebrities go so crazy and, like, get mixed up in drugs and stuff like that, because 
when they realize that, you know, they now have no more material needs and they're still not happy. It brings on kind of an existential crisis. That's not entirely wrong. No, I really think that's a lot what it is. Okay, so while John's looking up where we need to go, I'm going to take the reins here. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and do this. We got three cham! Oh, yeah, we should use those. Mm-hmm. All I know is that he's above the land of ice somewhere. No change to cupel yet. Above the lands of ice somewhere, huh? Yeah. I, um, I guess we just have to keep looking. We couldn't find the idiot, but I <laughs> think we're a little bit too low level to... We'd probably have a tough time right now anyway. So we're going to go with Oscar's plan and we're going to visit Doc. Well, how long has it been since we've had a challenge? That, that's true. We've been kind of steamrolling this game lately. Hi. <laughs> I see you've caught some moonfish. Here, let's feed the little critter. Yeah, I don't... I don't remember how many moonfish are in the game or how many we still need to get. I mean, we got quite a few since we last visited. Yeah. At least I think we did. We've got at least three. The Magilix, Magilix Idol. Okay, we're at another oh, here we go. level of story, though. Thank you for bringing these fish for me. M oh, M Maria. <laughs> For you, Maria, it's no problem at all. If it's moonfish you want, just leave it up to me. I'm going to bring you more than you'll ever need. Thank you. Aww. Thank you, Buys. Maria is slowly becoming yourself again. I owe everything to you. I don't know what to say. I thank you from from my the bottom of my heart. I uh. really do. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Sorry, old head injury. Aw, uh, come on, Doc. Don't get all teary-eyed on me. I'll just keep gathering fish to make her happy, okay? You know, you remind me of a man I used to work with. He was a lot like you. Honest, kind, the kind of guy that everyone likes. Well, he was a little more refined than you, though. His name was Ramirez. Oh! Da -da! I hear that he's been promoted to a position of admiral in the Value and Armada now. Ramirez? Huh? You guys know him? Uh, it's a pretty well, small world. <laughs> well, more or less. Also, in the world of Skies of Arcadia, it's impossible that two people have the same name, by the way. <laughs> Doc, can you tell us what you know about Ramirez? Uh, sure. Flashback. <laughs> I'm gonna need a flashback for this. Whoa. So, we're finally gonna get some real Ramirez side story tucked away in this side quest. Yeah. It was a long time ago, back when I was still working for Admiral Mendoza in the Valuan Armada. We were sailing around mid-ocean when we encountered a ship of the likes we had never seen before. And aboard that ship was Ramirez. He was an odd fellow, to say the least. I distinctly remember the clothes he had on. Very unusual. Look a lot like what Fina wears. Mm -hmm. But Ramirez turned out to be as intelligent as he was good with a blade. Admiral Mendoza grew to like him rather quickly. Admiral Mendoza saw that he had potential and began training him to become an officer of the Value in Armada. He had high hopes for him. We were all surprised at how little he knew about the world, but he was so honest and so sincere that everyone loved him. And I, too, was glad to have a crewmate who seemed trustworthy, someone I could call a friend. Ramirez, from this day forth, you are a member of the Valuant Armada. Hold your chin high. 
Thank you very much for all your help, my lord. Way to go, Ramirez. I always knew you'd make the cut. Thank you too, Doctor. Oh, come on. You can stop calling me Doctor all the time. Everyone just calls me Doc. Ha ha ha. You two never change. I just want to let you know, you two are like sons to me. The sons I never had. I hope I can count on you as my right-hand men. My lord, you're being a little greedy there, aren't you? My lord already has two lovely daughters of his own, and yet he wants sons too? Ha ha ha! That's not what I mean. All I'm saying is that you two can count on me as, I, as you would a father. My lord, I thank you. You do not know how much that means to me. Ramirez looks good. Yeah. Yeah, he looks good in that armor. Who would have thought that Doc and Ramirez used to be buddies? Alright, Maria, I hear ya. I'll be there in a, in a second. Vice, please feel free to come by and visit whenever you want. I'm sure Maria and her little feathered friend will be happy to see you. It's not such a little feathered friend anymore. Mm hmm but don't forget to bring more Moonfish with you. I'm sure there's plenty more still out there somewhere. I think we still have more Moonfish to give them. Yeah, that was only one, right? Mm-hmm. It's gonna kick us back out to the overworld, though. Well, let's... Yep, we still have more Moonfish. All right, let me hear it, Doc. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, feed the Moonfish. Um, uh, feed the moonfish to yeah. the bird. Yeah. We also got a Magilix Idol out of it, so yeah. I want to see what that does. It's like the Hamachao Gachapon system. And we get... Ghost Mail. Dear living people. Oh, is that really all we had? I'm pretty sh I have a feeling that he eats more the- that he eats more the bigger he grows. Yeah, but I mean... Hmm. Yeah? Yeah, that's all the moonfish that we had. Huh. Well, let's go ahead and see what these items are, and then we'll call it a day. Yeah. Alright. Um, items... First of all, the Magilex Idol. Do 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 do. Um... Might be under accessories? Oh, well, one of them was male, too. Ghost male. A strange outfit that appears translucent in light and floats eerily when released. Cool. Um, Magilex, Magilex, Mag, Mag, Magilex. Is it a key item? No, is it a ship thing? No, did I skip over it? Hmm. Oh, there it is. Oh, Magilix Idol. One of the three lost sacred figurines that Pinta is looking for! Oh, of course, a bird had swallowed it. Okay. What does Pinta want with these things? Well, this was actually one of the items in the Dreamcast version that you had to use the little handheld thing to get. Oh! And since they don't have that in with the GameCube, they... This is basically useless. Yeah, they threw it onto the Hamachow. Well, I... I don't know. Maybe we can still give it to him. I'm not. I'm not really sh sure how. I mean, it works. maybe we can enter the ship and you know, talk to him. I don't maybe. know. Maybe. Well, let's go ahead and see what this ghost mail is all about. We got the berserker mail on him right now. Um, not a good, not a good upgrade to him. Ika. Mm, nope. And I don't think Fina can equip it. Uh, nope, she cannot. And... Enrique? Oh, whoops. No, no Enrique so... can't either. So basically it's money. <laughs> sounds good. About, sounds about good to me. Pretty cool, though, the idea of, like, ghost armor. Yeah. Trans, uh, transparent uh, armor. It kind of reminds me of maybe the concept of mage armor from D&D. &D. Oh, yeah, maybe. All right, so I think that's about all we can do at this point. I think... Uh, for some reason, we couldn't find Daikyokoku, so we'll have to save that yeah. for another time. Um, 
Yeah, he would he would be kicking our butts right now anyway. Oh hey, that's uh Oh, Pinta. The temple at the Ma of Tardis is probably the biggest mystery in all of Valua. There are stories of earthquakes on the part of the island, but if the island is floating, what is causing it to shake? Guess we can't give it to him. Nah, I guess he doesn't want it. Alright, well, next time we'll go to the Mall of Tardis. I'm the Comic Foil. I'm the Green Scorpion. And thanks for watching us while we were off track. Next time we'll be on track. Yep. And, and no more podcasts. At least not for a while. We were supposed to head over to Valua and check out what's beneath it, right? Maybe you should take the wheel now. Yeah, we'll take the wheel. Well then, I'll be relaxing downstairs in the mess hall. I'll leave the ship in your hands, Vice. <laughs> what do you even do, Don? I guess he I guess he overlooks the ship while uh yeah, he, while he drives when we don't want to drive. And when we're battling. Yeah. Or sometimes Lawrence does it, depending on how we have them equipped. Mm hmm Aside from that, he's basically uh he's basically our source of buffs <laughs> and comic relief. Mm-hmm.